Well, welcome to Trondheim. We're glad you could join us. Let's give the kids a hand. This has been a great week, a great week. It has been a blessing to have the team in here. We appreciate so many people who have helped make this possible. Uh, our corporate sponsors, Pools Plumbing. We've also had some generous donations by some other donors, and we appreciate you making this possible. What we've done this week is uh, the team has come in from Academy of the Arts, and they put on this drama seminar for our kids, and they've been teaching them um, some different skills and such in the arts. Of course, the culmination of the week is the performance that you, will, um, that you will see tonight, and we are looking forward to that. But it's great to have these folks in here to spend time with our kids, teach them these skills, and it's been a great experience, um, and uh, we're looking forward to that. And another great benefit of it as well is they come in with our biblical worldview, and don't we need more Christianity in the arts? And so that's been a blessing to see that as well. So we are going to turn it over now to one of the directors, Caleb Mack. Thank you all so much. Uh, as he mentioned, my name is Caleb Mack, and I have the honor and privilege of being the team leader for the Academy of Arts team that's gotten the privilege to work with your young people this week. And um, let me tell you, it's been, a, it's been a good week, okay? These young people, they've been working super hard, as you can already tell. Um, they were out here walking around a second ago, but they're going to bring some energy tonight. Um, they, they've been preparing this message just for y'all, and so you're in for a treat um, but before we get started, I just want to give a couple of housekeeping announcements. Now, I've kept the house lights on at this time for a bit of accountability, okay? So if you'll go ahead and join me, pull out your phone and wave it at me if you would. Go ahead and just, yep, stick it up there in the, yeah, there we go, all the phones. It looks like a concert in here. That's good. Um, but go ahead and take this opportunity and silence your phone, please. Now, listen, I've heard it said there's only one thing worse than a, a cell phone going off during a movie or a, or a theater production. And that's if that phone is your phone. So, yes, uh, let's work together to make sure that that is not the case. And I don't know what it is. Every week I make this announcement, and it still happens. Once or twice I hear a cell phone going off. Okay? So uh, don't be that person. And also take this opportunity to go ahead and um, shut off your flash, because I know you're probably going to want to take pictures of your young people up here. Um, and, and we encourage that, but not with the flash, because that can be very distracting for them. Um, and, and that can be distracting for the people around you, right? You, these, these young people, they've rehearsed um, and they've memorized their lines. They've been preparing for so long. They come out here on stage, the lights come up, and suddenly they're blinded unexpectedly from the audience. And we wouldn't want to have any Saul on the road to Damascus moments tonight. Okay? Some of you are still picking up on that. Um, but we, we're, we're going to go ahead and work together with the young people, make sure that doesn't happen. Play runs about two hours. There's no intermission. So if you find you need to get up at any point during the play, we ask that you direct your traffic to the sides, okay, either side, and then towards the back. Keep all traffic away from the front here, because as you can see, we've set up various booby traps for your, uh, for your, for your, uh, for your pleasure tonight. Um, and then uh, the reason I'm having you go to the sides is because at various times, as you've already seen, we're going to have young people using these two aisles. Okay. Okay, these two aisles right here are going to be used by the young people, and I don't want you to have an unfortunate run-in with one of them. Um, all right, uh, if we can go ahead and get the house lights off at this time, I think that covers just about everything. Uh, listen, let me just tell you this one thing. If you see something on stage tonight that makes you laugh, I want you to feel free to laugh, okay? If you see something that makes you sad, feel free to express that, all right? And uh, one more thing. If you see something, and the young people, um, they've been putting in a lot of diligent effort, and so if you see them making an excellent effort, and you want to let them know that you support them in that, please feel free to applaud, okay? We're going to give them, we're, we're going to let them know that we're out here and supporting them, but I, sometimes I feel like audiences aren't sure if they're allowed to do that. They don't want to mess people up, but listen, um, they, let, let them know, okay? Let them know. All right, if you'll go ahead and join me in prayer, I'm going to go ahead and open us, um, and, and we'll get started here. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the opportunity that we have to come together and watch this production um, that these young people have put together for us. Um, and it's, it's not just a, a normal production, Lord. It's a production that honors and glorifies you, and that is the purpose of it. Lord, would, um, would you be lifted up tonight? 
Would you open our hearts and minds um, to whatever the message is that you would have for us to learn, Lord? Let these seeds be planted and let them not be snatched away. Uh, Father, be with the young people. Keep them safe. Uh, Bless us as we go forward. And it's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. All right. Well, without any further ado... The Academy of Arts, in conjunction with Hilltop Christian School, is pleased to present your young people in the Lions of Trondheim. Let's give them a hand. No one's heard much of anything, except bombs. Uh, They've disrupted all the communications between Thronheim and the capital. Dag knows what he's doing. He studied radio for a long time. You? You're taught electronics? Well, not exactly taught electronics, ma'am. I did a lot of reading. Peter, hold this. There's hope for the receiver, but I don't know about the transmitter. Uh, I wish now I'd done a little more reading myself. Reverend Torvald. Reverend Torvald, I'm so glad you're here. I have faith we'll be getting news shortly, Mr. Cyberson. Please, trust God. Now, let us down! I think we're getting signals. Get out of the Pastor, have you seen my uncle Olaf? No, I haven't, Petter. I'm worried. He left here hours ago for food and water and hasn't come back since. He may be in danger. Come on, I'll help you find him. Uh, no, Pastor, could we wait until dark, please? Until dark? Petter, remember, you've trusted Christ. He is able to take care of his own. Good, we're getting signals again. Oh. Something about a German battleship. Yes, the German flagship, the Rutra, in the Oslo Fjord. I'm not quite sure, but 
Yes, yes, it's true. What we, we did it. We did it. Come on, Dad, tell us. It's true. The rumors about the German battleship being sunk is true. What? Come on, what rumors? The Norwegian defense. They sent it to the bottom of the Oslo Fjord. Yes. Damn yes. it. Not much. What do you mean? It's over. What? Come on, what's over? Norway, our, our King Haken and the Norwegian government, they fled the capital. Are you sure? Oslo's playing barbarian band music. And they'll be marching into Throneheim soon. What's that, Otto? Someone's here? Everyone, down and stay back! Yes, who's there? It's Olaf! <sighs> Welcome me! It is I, Olaf Sweet, returned alive and well after a victorious hunt. Make ready for a Viking feast! Are you not? It's no time for humor, Olaf. Oh, but Kevin, humor is a good thing to learn. Especially in our small against smaller opponents like Nazi Iran. <laughs> Let's start with the city, Olaf. No question, sir. I had a terrible time digging through that rubble. <laughs> oh, Kasper, you'll be happy to hear that the Trondheim Cathedral still stands. A building made with hands, Olaf. But my friends, my congregation once lived in that city. Well, I see you agree. There are German battleships in our harbor. If you ask me, what we need to do is. Who is she, Olaf? Who is she? Oh, her. A homeless waif, home gone in the bombing. Her family too, probably. I gave her some food I scavenged off the street, and she followed me here. Couldn't see any harm in that. Good. We're getting a signal. <gasps> Are you all right? I thought you might be hungry. What is your name? What is your Leave name? Leave me alone! I'm afraid, nephew, you have much to learn about war. A broadcast from London. The British have pledged every means of support against, for the Norwegian resistance against the Nazi invaders. No! Germany defeated Norway! The Brits? Ha! The Brits will fare a little better! You may be right, but what we can't do on the front lines against the German machine, we can do behind the lines with a little bridge equipment and help. I suppose you're listening. I hear you, and your hands are full. Would be a good start. I'm all for that. Then our work begins tonight. <laughs> I will try to make contact with the bridges. Dag, you and Otto stay here and try to keep that transmitter working. Yeah, try to dial them. Nephew, come with me. Uh, where are we going? To do a little cloak and dagger, my boy. To keep an eye on the German whereabouts and come. Uh, what about the girl? Johan here will see that she makes it to my house. It's safer outside the city, and my wife would be happy to care for her. Johan? But he's just a boy. Surely there's someone more. N nephew, that boy just so happens to be a lead commander in the Norwegian underground resistance. I'm fairly certain he is more than qualified for the job. I'm sorry, I, I meant no offense. Let that be a lesson to my boys. Never take anyone for granted. There's always much more to people than meets the eye.
talking about the Bible study cast here anymore. This kid was an explorer, Paul. It's hard sometimes to focus on that with Nazi TV on every corner. It is hard. You're right. But I think with not TV on every corner, focusing on our Lord is the only way that we can have any sort of peace at this time. You're right. But there's no peace in Flandern. We can at least find it in God's word. And if there is no bread in Flandern, we can at least have the bread of life. Um, no bread? Well, that's funny. I went to the baker's just this morning, and Elsa gave me enough for us all. But you said that we cannot do this. Yes, you can. God has provided for us, and now he is providing for you as well. Trust him, my friends. He will neither leave us or forsake us. Thank you. Of course. Of course. Thank you for coming. You too. Of course. Thank you. Um, come in. Who is this? Your husband asked you to bring her here. You do not know her name. She hasn't spoken since she arrived at the underground. Can you care for her? Yes, of course. Here, let me grab you both something to eat. Christina, will you take my friend here and get her something warm to wear from my closet? Yes, of course, Mother. I'm sorry to come so late. But your husband insisted it would be fine. Oh, and it is. We're happy to help in any way we can. Here, please have a seat. Thank you. It seems like only yesterday we were living in a free Norway, and all my husband and I had to worry about was planning our next event at the church. And now? Yes, much has changed. But what about you? I feel like I know so little about you. What did you do before the war? I was in school. I see. So what got you interested in joining the resistance? I was involved from the beginning, first by writing, editing, and distributing the underground newspapers. Which is illegal work. Weren't you frightened? At first, yes. Yes, I was. But I've learned how to play their game, I guess you say. <laughs> yes, my husband has told me what an excellent agent you are. But I know your work with the resistance has come with great sacrifice. Do you see your family? I saw my father once on the train. He didn't recognize me. I've changed quite a bit since you last saw me. And I didn't dare speak to him. It's just too dangerous and lost in it all, the better for them. Well, I know your father would be proud if he knew all you were doing for the cause. Proud to call you a son. I know I'm proud to call you my friend, even though we've only known each other for a few weeks. Well, I must be going. Thank you for the food and for your help. Of course, it's my pleasure. Oh, and Johan. I know your work with the resistance can be very lonely, so if you ever need anything, I hope you trust Christine enough to ask. Of course. Thank you, Mrs. Forbaugh. Of course.
what you're up to. You're just saying that to make me pity you, so I'll give you some bread. Yeah. Don't you? Don't I what? Pity this poor fool that there's only for you. Give him a chance. Yeah. No! No! He left me by myself in the rain the other night, waiting for a car that never came to take me home. So I'm not as important as business? Of course you are. How could that be? The whole town agrees. On to a simple baker's daughter, and you've teased me with no mercy. Yeah. No, sir. Yeah. My dear, I wouldn't tease you if I didn't think you were pretty. Oh, really? Me? Yeah. Pretty? No one else saw through such a retreat, but I didn't think it was out of love. this loaf? I do. Then have it! Olaf, it's you. 
I saw the crowd and was afraid of the worst. You're always afraid of the worst, Captain. I'm telling you what's the point. You can say lunch besides. And groaning, attention to yourself in front of the Nazis. And I've told you before, it's been weeks since the invasion, and the Nazis are here to stay. Life must go on. Can't hide in our cellars forever. <laughs> this ability will decrease with position, not increase it. You love to gamble, Olaf, but now you're not gambling borrowed money. You're gambling your recent lives. How about this? You handle things your way, and I'll take care of mine. We'll see who gets results. Ready? If I bought a piece of bread from you, would you tell me your name? You don't have any money. What? Of course I do. <laughs> okay, well, true. But uh, still, would you? Uh, is it Greta? Oh, Greta. Uh, it's Annette. Oh, I know. Your name, it's Lillian. It's Ingrid. Now, will you leave me alone? Fine. Then I guess you don't want to know about the raid that we're planning. The what? Oh, so fine. Now you want to talk. Well, too bad. I can't tell you anything. It's top secret. Peter, you are a fool! I better change your mind about that once I'm a Norwegian hero. Uh -huh. I didn't do anything. No, please, no. I didn't do anything. Ah, go. No. Frightens me, that's all. I thought they overheard me telling Ingrid about the raid. Not so loud. You see, I heard from my friend Dag that the British agents are planning to move soon. And you were telling someone about it? Well, I... He didn't tell me anything. He was too busy running off like a frightened rabbit. And you'd have done the same thing. You're just too oh, proud to admit it. I not done the same thing because I'm smart. Stop! Okay, well... <sighs> Fighting won't help Ingrid. Tether, look at me. Look at me. Never run. Do you hear me? Never. By running, you could have ruined everything. You could have given us all a day. I, I'm sorry, Uncle. You've got a lot to learn, Tanzu. Please learn this one thing from an old huntsman like me. If you are scared, never let anyone see it. You may feel like screaming, but keep your mouth shut. Do you understand? Now then, British agents. Uh, with radio equipment and supplies. Then in where will this happen? Uh, tomorrow night, uh, Vigna Island, the northeastern shore. You see, the British are trying to keep us and other resistance fighters equipped with some of the things to do the most important work of the war. The, the Germans, they have a factory here in Norway. And uncle, they are producing heavy water. They mean to produce nuclear weapons, and the Allies need us to stop it before it's too late. Huh. What, what is so funny? N nothing, nephew. Who informed you of this? I already told you. Dag sent Freuland and Pastor Torvald. Torvald? I thought as much. Petter, do you trust this Reverend Torvald? <laughs> Why, yes, don't you? We'll see. What do you mean by that? Another lesson from the hunt. Watch. Keep your eyes open. Where is the pastor when you're in trouble? Do you see him around now? Well, no. Watch him. And listen to this old huntsman advice. It may keep you alive. I want you to know, I will be there to help tomorrow night. I'll be there too, and I can show no! you- No! Stay away from Vigna tomorrow night! Uncle, I, I said, stay away. Do you understand? I, I guess. It is for your own good. 
I wish I had as much faith in me as I have in him. Well, maybe when you're a Norwegian hero, he'll feel differently. Okay, ever since I've met you, I've only tried to help you, and mm. yet you despise me. Why? I have little use for men who talk big and do nothing. Talk big and do nothing? I'm sorry, what do you mean? I must be getting back to Reverend Thorvald's house. But I'm not finished yet. You've been... Come what? to think of it, I have no time for boys who whine like spoiled children either. So sorry. Here, my Get off! What? It looked like you needed a hug. No. Who was that girl? What was her name? No! Oh. Is it? Yeah. Think quickly. I've just finished the newspapers. Here, give them as to as many people as will take them, but be careful. Always. Oh, hey Marius. I need your help with the top secret mission. Dag has informed me that there is to be a rendezvous with the British ship tomorrow night at Vienna Island. I have instructed him to tell no one, and I will look to you to do the same. Once they have received the shipment, I will need you to take the supplies to the resistant workers camping in the hills. Their mission, they need these supplies to complete their mission in Marius. Their mission can change the course of the entire war. Tell me what to do, and I will do it. Meet me here tomorrow night to receive further instructions. Tor. Can I help? Please, I want to do more than just hand out newspapers. Tor, never think that this underground newspaper is unimportant work. It spreads crucial information and does something even more important than that. It gives hope, Tor. Never underestimate the power of hope. I know, but it's hard not to even want to help. Well, if helping is what you want to do, I have just the thing. This is Frank and Marie. They are brother and sister. They are Jews. Pastor Torvald has asked me to find a hiding place for them. Their parents have been taken by the Germans to the east. They need help, Tor. Will you help them? I, I will. I know the place No! Said. Do not tell me, heaven forbid, if Marius and I ever be taken and tortured, it will be safer for everyone if we know as little as possible. I admire your zeal, Marius, but then you've never been tortured, have you? You'll need these ration cards if your contacts will take them in. And remember, tell no one where you are hiding them. Goodbye. Now go and be careful.
Why would your uncle not want us to help with the mission? I don't know. Maybe he thinks I'm scared and I'll mess things up. But I won't. I am not scared. Perhaps you just want to be thought of, Peter. Your uncle loves you very much. It's harder than you can imagine to lose someone you love. But mother, wouldn't father want me to do something to help the mission? Yes, he would, Peter. But I'm not your father. Do come in. Who is this? I have a great favor to ask of you, little Fraulein. Yes? This is Frank and Willie. They are Jews. Their parents have been taken by the Nazis, and they need a place to stay. Will you hide them here in your home? Well, I... I have been given these ration cards, and I will help in any way that I can from keeping them from being a burden. They have no one in our... Tor, they can stay. I am honored to have them stay. Don't worry. This is Otto. He's a friend of ours, and he's new. But as you can see, his heart speaks more purely than any tongue of mine. Aren't you lovely, Otto? He says he will build them a room where they can hide from the. He says he will build them a room where they can hide from the Nazis. Thank you. Thank you all. Now come, I'll, I will show you where you can stay. In, in the morning, he will build you a, a room where you can hide from the Nazis. You will be safe here. <coughs> what do the Nazis want with such innocent people? Why are they bringing them all to the East? What is it all for? I don't know, but the one thing I do know is it's very evil. Yes, Dad. It is evil. It is an evil I dare none of us can imagine. But mother, do you mean? Yes. You must go to Pastor Torvald's house and see what she can do to help with the mission tonight at Virginia's Island. I will, mother. I'll do all I can. I know you will. I know you both will. Also, this mission, it's going to be very dangerous. Vicna Island is far from any lights. It will be dark, Otto. Very, very dark. <sighs> All right, Otto. Meet us tomorrow night, 11 o'clock at the bridge. <laughs> Why do you ask that? Is her face all on fire? Whose face, Christina? The evil one, outside the door. But there's no one out there. But there was something there. When I looked out the door, I thought I saw a face in the trees. It didn't frighten me at first. Couldn't tell who it was, but somehow it seemed friendly, kind. You see, Christina, it was just the trees. But then there was a flash of lightning, and the face, I thought I saw the face laughing at me. It was awful. Oh, Mother, see the evil one? It was just a lightning flash. That's what frightened you. So scared, Mother. Now, now, don't cry. <laughs> that's what it was. Fire. 
Now, Anna, we don't need help like that. Ingrid. Anna! No more of that. But Edward told me it was true. No more, I said. Come in. Now, my dear children. Who is greater than he that is in the world? Jesus in heaven? Yes. So, if Jesus could calm a raging sea, if he could heal the lame and give sight to the blind, shouldn't we trust him to care for us tonight? But how can we trust him when we can't even see him? Well, you've heard Father teach from his word that the just shall live by faith. Faith is taking God at his word, believing that he will care for our souls as well as our lives. Shouldn't we trust him to care for us? I think so. I guess so, Mother. Now, I know Father will be home soon. Let's drown out the sound of the rain and the wind with a song. More secure is no one ever than the loved ones of the Savior. Not yon star on high abiding nor the bird in home that's hiding. Little flock to joy then yield thee, Jacob's God will ever shield thee. Rest secure with this defender, at his will all foes surrender. <laughs> children, children, you cheer my heart on a night like this. Ava. Ooh, Arna, you're drenched. Have you been swimming in the North Sea again? No, but I feel as wet as I swim across it. Here, sit down. In a moment, I'll have some tea piping hot for you. Anna, grab a cup for me, please. Now, as I was saying before, it's not a night fit for man or beast with the wind and the lightning. I'm glad you're home safe. So am I. I wish you had been here, Father. We've had such a fright. Oh, and how's that? I thought I saw something evil. We thought we saw something scary. There. Look by the door. You see, it was probably just the wind and the lightning that frightened them. But they know now that the Lord will care for us. Then they sang a song. You know what, Father? We know it's true, even though you think. Anna, why would you say that? Anna, please. Ava. Anna, please understand. We do not hate any man or woman. We do hate the wickedness, but, and you tell this to Edward. But the truth is, we are no better than they are. We are just as prone to sin. Our Lord died to pay the price for their sin, and for our sins as well. For all who believe, Anna, for all who believe. Anna, I hope I would never have to kill anybody. Here, Father, this should warm you up. Anna, why don't you help your sister at the table? Anna, be good. You're troubled. Can you tell me? Troubled? Yes, very. Can I tell you? I'm afraid I cannot, that I should not. Listen, something should happen. I don't want to think of it, but if something should happen, the less you know, the better it is for you and the children. But I would I be know, well. I know, but still, it is better that there are things you do not know. Better? But Ava, how? you must trust me. I'll try to give you some peace so you can pray. Mother! Anna said that the Nazis kill people and then they eat them. That is not true, is it? Ava doesn't know anything! Children! Children. Let's not trust in the words of men, but in the words of God. Now, go get ready for bed. Ava. Yes? I think we need to have a talk about this Edward fellow. 
We agree. Who's there? Who is there? Chester, Chester must be back from Toyland. Did he come in? We've come to help. I hope we're not too late. Help with what? Anthony, you know you're not supposed to be here. Did anyone follow you here? Not that we know of. What is it that you want to help with? Why with the landing of the British radio equipment and supplies? Tomorrow, after midnight. Does anyone else know about this? Just my uncle Olaf and Otto Roman, of course. We'll do anything you say. The weather doesn't matter. We'll be lookouts if that's what you need. And you know Dagman here can help set up any of the equipment that we've received. Just let us know what you want us to do. Go home, boys. What? Go home. I fear there'll be great dangers tonight. But Petra and I were... We're not afraid. I'm sure you're not afraid. You're coming this far shows courage, but if you'll do as I ask, you will go home now. Talk to no one, tell no one what is taking place tomorrow. But Pastor... I know, I know. But there's nothing more you can do. Come on. We're going to go see what happens at Bikna Island tonight. Good night, both of you. The Lord knows I'm telling you this for your own sakes. Thank you, Pastor. Good night. I must go. But Ingrid, in, in a night like this, where others will not succeed against the enemy, I will. Promise. But Ingrid. Ava, we have so little time. You must pack as much clothing and food for you and the girls as you can. And you're leaving? I must, but only for a little while. When I come back, we must all go. Ava, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. I believe that, Armin. I love you. Trust me. It's past midnight, but no sign of the boat. Do you think we've come to the wrong place? No, this is the spot. I'm sure of it. Over there, you can see the shore of Bikna Island. I don't know. I'm worried. Ever since it stopped raining, it's been awfully quiet. Do you think the British got into some kind of the trap and canceled the mission? It could be. Pastor Torvald was acting really suspicious. Uh, and my uncle Olaf didn't want us here either. Maybe he... Uh, stop! Look over there! What? What is it? See, I can barely make it out. But it looks like a small boat coming in. See it? No motor, no lights. Maybe it's got to be them. Piece of cake. Let's give them a hand. Wait, dive down. Do not move, Dad. Do not move. It's a trap, Peter.
Everyone, you've got towards now. Abort! Abort mission! The drone is going to Yes, bring them in. Thank you, Pastor, for your time. But you must excuse me. I have many things to attend to. Yeah, of course. What? Is your business here completed? Yes, yes it is. Then please, show yourself out. But those boys, why were they here? Were Step they- away from my desk. But they weren't supposed to be here! Step away now! Now. If you do not have any further business here, I'm afraid I must let you leave. Goodbye, Pastor Torvald. Goodbye. Norwegian tea has such a interesting flavor. Oh, I know it's not even made before the war, but still it is uh, quite good. I am sure your husband and son have had many meals here at this very table. It is amazing to me how you Norwegians are so willing to put your families in danger to save the lives of complete strangers. Miss Fora. You are hiding jewels, enemies of the state, aren't you? <laughs> you see, Miss Florin, I have your son, and I know where he was last night. So, you can either tell me where you are hiding the jewels, or we can wait and have my men search for them my themselves. <coughs> so what will it be, Miss Florin? Where are you hiding? The Jews. Where are you hiding the Jews? Search this house all you like. 
but you will never find the Jews. Search the house! It's okay, I understand, money's tight right now. is the desire of our two countries that there be a spirit of cooperation. <laughs> this is the policy of peace and goodwill. However, there are those who instead of fostering a working relationship choose to incite riot and to tear down our social order. Peace! <laughs> quiet! These two traitors have been found guilty for collaborating with the enemy. This is high treason. <laughs> and therefore, they must suffer the consequences. <laughs> Quiet! Lest there be any other so foolhardy, let this be your example. EXECUTE THEM! I hope you will not be as foolish as your son, Fraulein. But though we found no Jews in your home, I am sure some sympathy for the resistance lives in your heart. <clears throat> Let this show you that our Fuhrer will succeed in his purpose here. Germany will reign supreme. Any of you who choose to stand our way will be eliminated. Jackson, you owe your mother has, please. No. Jackson, please. Reverend Jackson, tell me. Take the island of Jackson and also. What's going on with you? No, not at the Did island. Did you see the Reverend last night? Yes. Do but you just... know where he is now? No. Ah! Jackson, please. What the? Someone ah! is betraying us to the Germans. You know that. Why do you trust someone who's so absolutely missing during this trouble? Pastor.
Victor Torvald cannot. And why not, Victor? Just because he's not going through Bible stories, you think he's some kind of saint? Look around, Tessa. Look and see what he's done to your friend. No! Ingrid, no, don't run, Ingrid! No! Ingrid, no, wait! Please. Get away from me! Ingrid, I'm not going to hurt you. You're going to turn me over to the Nazis, no. aren't you? No, Ingrid. You shouldn't have run like that. Had the Nazis seen you, they would have taken you into questioning. What would you care? What would any of those cowardly patriots care who was there to see their show? That poor mute, that miserable kid butchered like Ingrid, Otto and Dag were my friends. Were they? Then why didn't you do something? Why didn't any of those people do something? There's nothing that any of us can do against the Germans and their guns. Yes, there is. You can plunge cold steel into their hearts. I hate them. I hate them. Ingrid. It was you who took taking that island, wasn't it? It was. And I don't care who knows. See, at least I'm willing to fight. That's how I made it out of Trondheim that day the Nazis first came. But, um, but my little sister, my little sister never stood a chance. The bombs were raining down on us and her hand slipped out of mine. She ran back to get her doll. She died in my arms. I wasn't even scratched. Oh, but with all their guns and their bombs, they made a mistake, a fatal mistake. They left me alive. And since that day, the reason I live is to see them all die. <laughs> They are destroying you now. They can't. Neither you nor anyone else can stop me. Ingrid, the enemy is tearing apart our country from within. They're doing the same thing to you. They've gotten inside of you with this hatred that's burning like some sort of poison. Now, you may put up a good fight, but sooner or later that hatred is it's going to eat you alive, and they are going to win. You think like Torvald, you act like Torvald, and now, you're beginning to preach like Torvald. And what's as wrong with that? He's working for the enemy. And if you follow him, you are no different. I am different. And I'm not working for the Germans. And you're wrong about Torvald. He's helped me many times. You still believe in him? Someone tipped the Nazis last night. Someone who knew the details of our mission. Now, do you know what happened last night after you left the Torvald's house? No. I, too, left the house. But after about a mile or so, I stopped, and I waited behind some trees for the rain to let up. I heard a car coming from the direction of the house, and I hid. And do you know what I saw? Instead of heading towards Vikna Island, where he could have helped, Torvald headed for the heart of Trondheim. Does it?
it really take that much imagination to see him at the Nazi headquarters? There's got to be another explanation. Is there? Then you will have to make it up, because you won't be getting it from him or his family. Why? What has happened to them? Last night, when I made it back to the house, it was empty. The family fled. They're probably safe in Sweden while we... Now, what do you think? I, I'm not sure what to believe anymore. I... Then don't preach at me about hatred. I have a right to it. And when you finally see that your beloved pastor friends has betrayed you, you too will feel the anger that I feel. S someone's coming. Who is it? Peter. Peter, wait. Elsa? Yes. I'm sorry to surprise you like this, but I needed to talk to someone after the shootings. You mean the murders? <laughs> that is what I mean. Well, like I said, I was watching that awful thing happen outside my window when I saw you and the girl run off from the crowd. Right then is when I knew that you were the one I needed to talk to about Olaf. My uncle? What, what about him? He's, he's hurt me deeply, but I still care for him. In fact, I love him, and I heard Olaf say he was going to Reverend Torvald's house to take care of some business. Torvald? I thought he was out of the country. Olaf must have gotten him to stay so he could settle the score after what happened at Vigna Island last night. Peter, please, he's your uncle. He won't hear it from me. Elsa, I'll do as I can, okay? Thank you. So, someone is doing something. Your uncle. I want to be there to help, and you would too, if you weren't so afraid of the truth. Afraid? No. I can't afford to be afraid. What are you doing here? Do you know anything about putting this back together? Zach had a good mind. Bobby could have resurrected this thing in a few days. He was still here. It's a hard loss. Both of them like that. It'll be hard to replace. Replace? <laughs> Zach was my friend, a uh, brother to me and Otto. I'm sure of that. I can only imagine what you're going through right now. And I don't need any more of your counsel, Pastor. As you wish. Did you know what was going to happen last night? I saw it coming. Then why did you let it happen? Uh, Petter, remember, I told you and Dag not to go to Vikna. But we did go. We wanted to help you. Anyways, we were there but you were nowhere to be seen. Petter, I couldn't be there. There are some things that need to be explained, but I can't. Not yet. That is true. You were at the Nazi headquarters last night. Petter, if I could only tell you everything, I would. No. Tell me the truth. Were you at the Nazi headquarters last night? 
You want the truth? I was. I hold to be seen and take attention away from what was happening at Vigna Island. Well, it's in its work. Peter, you have to understand. Understand? Is that what you said to Ingrid the night she came to your home to find your family secretly gone off to Sweden in the middle of the night? You can't always believe what you see, Petter. I haven't searched for you all day just to lie to you. Petter, you are going through a battle even greater than the one our country is fighting. For you, the lines are not clear. The camouflage is heavy. This may be the hardest thing for you to do in the world, but I must ask you to do it. How hard is that? You must trust me and the God I serve for the truth. It's a task, come right? Come to my house tomorrow at sunset. Ask no one to come with you. You must come alone. And if I don't come? Then you'll never hear from me again. My work will be done. I can only ask you to step out in faith. I remember a time when I just waited for someone to point me in the right direction. That time is gone now. There's no one there to point me to see what is right and what is wrong. And trust, <laughs> how can you put your faith in anything when it's been dashed again and again by those you once looked up to, by those you once respected? Too much to ask. I, just, I can't. What else can I do? Oh, God, help me. I can't give you any more. You must go. Don't you worry at all, you'll see. Some of my people may be stubborn and thick-headed, but most by nature are good citizens. When this whole thing's over with, you'll see that some of us Norwegians can be very useful to the right. When Berlin hears about how bravely and wisely we've handled affairs here today, they will be ecstatic. 
about it. All of us and I know exactly what we're doing. <laughs> or something like that. Hey, you! How long have you been here? Long enough. Long enough for what? You better tell me or you'll be in lots of trouble. What? You have my word. Please don't shoot me. I can cooperate very well. We know that for a fact. Move over to the wall. And don't look back over your shoulder. Why? Ah! Anything you say, just please don't hurt me. No, what are you doing? All right, Rostad. What's all the excitement about? Excitement? What excitement? Ah! Uh, the German excitement. Yeah, uh, I don't know. <gasps> Maybe a hunting trip? A hunting trip? That's right, that's right. Where you were? Now just wait a minute, I'm a countryman. I'm really on your side. Where? Ulrich? <laughs> Why Ulrich? We're just in here searching into a few poor old fishermen's houses. In Yenzer Torvald's old house. But of course, that's empty now, isn't it, Rostad? It certainly is, very, very empty. No reason to be concerned about it. No reason at all. Empty, unless of course, there's a ghost! You believe in ghosts, don't you, Rostad? Me? No, 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 no. Ah, I do, yes! <laughs> <laughs> you won't get away on this! If we don't, <laughs> you don't. Got it? All right, all right. Whose ghost are you hunting at Rorvik, Rostad? Please, I can't say. Have mercy on me. Could it be Torvald? I don't know. Perhaps, possibly. What about Olaf Wisp? No, absolutely not. That is ridiculous. How could you think such a thing? No, please let me go. I want some, please. No! If you come back to Slaughterhouse, Slaughterhouse will have itself another ghost. You hear me, Rostad? You fool! You won't get the light on this! Just wait till the day I find you on the street! I will end you! Rogstad? What happened? Don't just stand there and tie me, woman! Oh my goodness. What happened to you? They tortured me! Ah! My leg! Blood! Pain! Everywhere! You uh, forgot your tie. My tie? My keen Norwegian informant begins to prove profitable. 
He is anxious to resolve the unfinished business on Vikna Island. He promises a very special occasion where he personally delivers over the very leader of the Trondheim resistance. All preparations have been made and all precautions have been taken. He awaits my arrival. You! You will fetch me my car. We will drive to Rohrig. Schnell! Oh, come it on! Who are you? Identify yourself. I am Hendrik Rockstad, one of your most trusted informers. A trusted Norwegian informant. Hmm. Well, go on. In private, sir. I'm a very busy man. What do you want? I have been attacked, Commandant. <laughs> yeah. You have been attacked? By whom? By the soldiers of the resistance. <laughs> By the resistance. I see they did not do a very thorough job. I barely escaped them. So my life. <laughs> they tried to get the information from me. I've come to warn you. Information. Go on. It's very, very valuable information. Oh, I am sure. But you must make a full report inside headquarters. Mm -hmm. Ha-ha! Take him to the interrogation. Put him through some thorough questioning. Ah! No! No, what's it supposed to be like? I must speak with you! You are a terrible liar. Take him away. No! No, it wasn't supposed to be like this! Please! No! <laughs> the car is ready, sir. I am off to Rome. Um, late last night, when I got back to the house, it was empty. The, they knew they were in trouble. What do you mean? Thorvald's coming back. Tonight. You think he would dare? Doesn't he realize that the resistance would not hesitate to make a fake minister like him pay for helping the Germans? Perhaps. But I don't think he cares. He's ready to move on to his parents. What can we do for this week? Well, We'll have one more thing to deal with before we make the getaway. And what is that? Me. He will be here tonight to deal with me, his greatest rival. But he will have men and weapons. All that has been taken into account, my dear. At this very moment, <coughs> there are men all along the road, ready and waiting. Tonight, we end the secret operation. I'll do whatever you need me to. You know you can count on me. That's good to hear, Inga. You prove very useful to me. Torvald? No. Too early. Stop. Oh, it's me, Peter. You know me, Uncle. When something important is happening, I can't stay away. How did you get to know my men? Well, they stopped me, then let me through. I am your nephew. Yes. So you are. Well, I've warned you. And now that you're here, you better prepare yourself for a major disappointment. I am prepared, I believe, Uncle. Yes? Maybe you're starting to favor your old uncle the Hunsman after all. 
learning by your wits, caring enough to survive. Nobody's fool. You have taught me much, uncle. Then keep learning. If a hunter is skilled and patient, he will be rewarded, will he not? Well, that's maybe good or bad. How is that? Well, what if the hunter goes after and kills the wrong prey? The wrong prey? Huh. What's the difference is there between a wrong and a right? Let the philosopher tell you about that. That's us. Don't you understand? Your uncle is giving you a golden opportunity to serve your country. We all know about Torvald. And if you have any hope for a future, you'll help us, or your sympathies for your misguided pastor friend will get you as much trouble as he's already got. Ingrid, I pray you won't be the hunter's victim, too. I knew you had no common sense. So, nephew, it seems as if you're not willing to take the reward, that your decision Foolish one. I just hope you didn't come with any intention of frightening away my quarry. No, I haven't, uncle. I want to help you. You do? Ah. Maybe I misjudged you. I know I've misjudged you. I've been slow to learn, and I should have been watching more closely as you showed me how to survive. Don't talk to that. <laughs> there are many times when I was reckless, but you helped me see just how foolish I could be. And I'm thankful for that, because then I had the chance to change before it was too late. Forgive me for not being more wiser and more alert. Someone's coming. There's been no luck. Nothing at all. There is just one more thing I want to tell you, Uncle. And what is that? Well, I would like to forgive you. Forgive me? I've struggled with what to do, and I've prayed and prayed for the strength to do what was right. Well, go on. <laughs> Is this over with? Uncle Olaf, I forgive you for this! No! This must be a mistake! There must be a reason! No mistake, girl. There are plenty of reasons. Norde is Finnish. I, I am not. So this is the thanks I get. After all I've done for you. I've been a fool to think you stay loyal to me after you spent so much time with that reverend friend and his Bible. Too bad for you, Captain. Too late. Uncle, please. Everything is under control, sir. Good. Make sure to stay out of sight. We wouldn't want to disappoint Commandant Fritz. The, the, the Commandant? Tonight, I will personally break the back of the Norwegian Resistance by presenting him with my greatest good, Arne Torvald. Go back to the Go! Go! Otto Roman. Dagfin Froilin. My little sister. How Ingrid, could no, you? Ingrid, no! Ingrid, you. Uncle, how could you I do this? I'm prepared to deal with you now, nephew. Though I'd rather not create a disturbance. Uncle, please, there's still time to turn back. What? And give up on the hunt when I'm about ready to make the kill. Uncle. Impossible! Uncle, please. Beg for mercy, but expect none from me. I believe the time has come. Do not try and spoil my moment of triumph. Shh. Hey, Pastor Torvald, no! What's happened? My family's away now, safe from the naughty hand. You should be so lucky. I invited you here today to inform us some rather bad news. And what's that? You are hereby relieved of your duties in the Norwegian underground resistance. Well, we done. We thought that was a joke. Good old Uncle Olaf! I introduce to you, Commandant Gerhard Fritz. 
We just have to stop it when we find him. No. Pyro coming to feet! You treacherous fool! How do you expect to succeed in this? Well, what's happening? The moment headquarters finds I've been kidnapped, they'll send an entire garrison looking for me and you! Kidnapped? How? But these are your men! I am sorry for you, Uncle. Oh, who said that? My own nephew. My own flesh and blood. How could you? You're an excellent huntsman, Uncle. But the only trophy you ended up bagging was yourself. You. You will pay for this, Olaf Wist. You will pay dearly for this. I will find you, and I will have your head on a platter. I will find you. I will kill you. Into the tree. You have a special trick. But what are you going to do with it? You don't have a hunter for heart like I do, Pedro. Would you be willing to kill me? Murder me in your own house. Nephew, what about you? <laughs> this Bible moral shall make you weep. Here is what I have beaten you. We have no intention of doing you harm, Olaf. You're free to go. What? You are free to go, uncle. Free to go. Free to go where I choose. We won't stop you. <laughs> because you know they wouldn't believe my story. We're quite sure of that. Then I'll get out of here. I'll get out of the country. That's what I'll do. I'll get out of this place. I'll make it. You'll see! I will make it! Poor girl, here, we can't stay any longer. Have it to try outside. How is she? Much better. I've been letting her rest as much as possible. Where? Where am I here with us, dear? You're at Elsa's Ingrid. She's been taking care of you. And Petr here has stayed by your side ever since you arrived. Petr, your uncle, he... Yes, but don't worry. He's gone now. Once he was discovered, he ran and we left him. We have heard he tried to make more ground by stealing a car, but... As it comes, the car he chose belonged to the Gestapo. He tried to deceive others, but only ended in deceiving himself. It was probably merciful that he died in a hill of bullets rather than a Gestapo torture chamber. As, as much as he hurt you, I know it's still hard on you, Peter. It's been hard on all of us who loved him. Yeah, you lost a part of your family forever. Yes, and it's been hard to realize that he was untrue to me. I, d I do miss him, but the Lord has shown me through this that we all have a choice. We can choose the way of Christ and righteousness or sin in our heart's desires. Speaking of choices, have you decided you'll stay in Trondheim, Petr? Yes, I, I've decided to leave tonight, actually. Do you have your identification papers? Yes, yes, I do, and you're right. Sigmund is an expert engraver. 
Well, I hope you feel like a new man, Pecker. I hope the Germans think you are, too. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Pastor? Will you be going to, to Sweden to yes. find your family? I leave tonight. Well, good. I'm sorry you missed Walden. It's much safer that way. I will be safe in his hands, so I need not fear. But I must go now. Goodbye, Pastor. And thank you for everything that you've done for me. When the war is over, and if we make it through, I will make sure to. Yes, you must all come. I have two younger siblings who could use some older siblings like yourselves, especially Anna. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Pastor. And God be with you. And with you. And remember, Peter, the just shall live, live by, by faith. faith. I must go take care of the shop. Try to rest if you can. I will be back soon. Thank you, Uncle. Thank you, Elsa, for your kindness. Uh, Peter, ma must you leave Trondheim? I've finished what I can do here. Besides, there's more work to be done in Telmark. What about yourself? I, I can't leave. Trondheim is where my family lived and where they died. Then I wish you well, Andre. Goodbye. Peter, wait. I, I was wrong. About what? <laughs> About hate and what it is. You see, you were right when you spoke to me the other night. My hate tore me apart much more than it ever hurt my enemy. There is help, Ingrid. My lord. Can, can forgive me, I know. I've seen it through you. With watching you forgive your uncle, I, I've never seen anything like that before. And the same forgiveness can live inside you, Ingrid. If you'll simply call in Christ's name, let go of your bitterness, give it to the Lord. I do want to, I do, but I cannot. Not, not today, not now. I, but I, I will ask you one last thing. Yes, anything. Will you, will you pray for me? You have my word, Ingrid. Then I know you will. Here. Uh, be oh. careful, please. Here. Here. Oh. So you can remember me when you're a Norwegian hero. <laughs> Ingrid, I don't. Goodbye, Peter. <laughs> Ingrid, I. Are you all right? Oh, yes, 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 I'm, I'm fine. Good. I inform the Allies that Operation Gunner Side is ready. We will carry out the sabotage in two days in Telmark. You and your team will stay on the Hardacre Plateau until given orders to proceed. And if the mission is not successful? Failure is not an option, Peter. We've already attempted two other times and failed. The Nazis now know we are trying to destroy the plant and are most likely making plans to move it to Germany. We cannot allow this to happen. They cannot gain nuclear power. God is on our side, Aunt Sophie. And with him, we are more than conquerors. Here is the meaning map to the meaning place on the plateau. Once you have read it, destroy it. Uh, Anne. Do you think the people will know? Know what? What we've done here. And what the freedom truly cost. I pray that they never stop searching until they know what was done here. And once they've heard our stories, I pray they never forget. For the moment we forget the cost of freedom is the moment that we lose it.
remind you that they put that all together in just one week. What a week it's been, and what a message they've shared with us, right? We look at this, and there's a lot of fictional characters. There are some real characters, Johan and the Commandant, to name a couple. But then we look at characters like, like Ingrid, like Peter, like Olaf. And they show us their characterizations and ideas of what people do in reaction to evil. Right? We look at, we look at Ingrid. Her reaction is hatred, and she's blinded by hatred. And her response is taking matters into her own hands. We look at Peter. He's confused. He doesn't know who to trust. But ultimately, he chooses to trust the Lord and do what he knows is right because of his relationship with Christ. But then we have the caution of somebody like Olaf. You see, Olaf, he's a nice guy. Everybody likes him. But Olaf makes a decision. And it's not a decision necessarily that he wants to be a bad guy. He chooses to watch out for himself, to do what is best for him. He toes the line between good and evil before fully committing. And what a message lies therein. Because I find it easy to relate to Olaf sometimes. I find it easy sometimes not to commit fully to the right. Not to do what I know is good. Not to do what I know my Lord wants me to do. The Bible says... Jesus says that he who will seek to save his life shall lose it. But he who will lose his life for my sake and the gospels, the same shall find it. And what a wonderful message that is. So have you had trouble committing? Committing to the Lord. Giving your life to him. Trusting him to save you from your sins. Believers, do you have trouble living for him daily and making the hard choices? What an important and vital message that they've shared with us, and it's a vital message too. Let's hope, let's pray that that message, these seeds of truth, do not get plucked away. Let's not forget them. Let's pray. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for these young people and their diligent effort in this production, Lord. They've given so much. And uh, Lord, thank you for stories. Thank you that you teach us using stories. That Jesus, he used parables and in very much the same way. This is not a parable, Lord. But it is a story that contains principles of truth. It contains your word, Lord. Your word was spoken tonight. And we know that your word does not return void, so we thank you so much for that blessing and for the fact that all of these young people and their hard work is not pointless. Because you're using this message, Lord, in somebody's hearts and life. Please do not let those seeds get snatched away. Help us to remember, to always remember. Remember Jesus Christ and his perfection how he loves us, how you loved us so much that you sent him, that any who believe on him should not perish but have everlasting life. His righteousness is enough to cover our sins. Help us to remember that when we have trouble forgiving, when we struggle with hatred. Help us to remember what we have been forgiven and then to show forth that, that forgiveness in an attitude of humility and thankfulness. Lord, be with us through the rest of this evening. And in Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. All right. Well, let me tell you a little bit, because um, the fact is, there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes to make something like this happen. Um, you see, myself and my team, we show up at the beginning of this week. We showed up on Monday with a van and trailer, and we unpacked it and did all of that. But listen, there's a whole lot of work that goes in before we even get here. 
Okay, so I would be remiss if I went forward from this place without giving thanks where thanks is due. So first and foremost, I think I speak for all of the young people um, when, I, when I say thank you to the parents. Listen, I know that there was probably some, uh, there, there was some investment that went into these young people to bring them here to Hilltop. Um, you, you know, I know that there was some early mornings and some late nights, a late Thursday night specifically and a late Friday night. We're going to have a late night tonight, I tell you what. Um, but that's an investment and that shows that you care. And so thank you so much. Let's give the parents a hand, young people. Let's give them a hand. <laughs> to uh, anyone who helped provide hospitality to myself or my team this week, I know there were, um, I know there were two families that housed us in their home. Um, and, and then there was a, a number of people who also provided food. I don't know if we could get the house lights on at this time, but if you helped in some way with, with, with hospitality for the team, so that's housing or food, I'm going to ask you to stand up right now. We want to recognize you and want to give you a big thanks. Um, where are you at? I know, you're all kind of shy. Yep, all right, there we go, there we go. Go, thank you so much. There we go. Listen, that's, a, that's some dedication, that's some sacrifice. And this week couldn't happen without you. That's a huge logistical thing. But on the topic of logistics, there's a big team of people here at Hilltop who are working together to make this week happen. So I'm going to make sure, I'm just going to list off a couple of names, okay? And you know what? I'm probably going to miss some people. And I'm sorry about that because I understand that this is a big undertaking. But just understand, um, we couldn't do this without you. Um, and we're, we're indebted to you for this, okay? So, um, so first of all, I want to thank Mr. Moots, uh, Mr. Moots, for, for having us and thank you so much I want to thank mr. Bell mr. Bell for coordinating this effort okay yeah and I want to thank miss Dennings for helping these young people get their lines memorized yeah it's good stuff Listen, we really appreciate your sacrifice. We really appreciate the effort that you're putting in and the investment that you're making in the next generation of young people. Um, and that means a lot to us, and that's significant. Well, all right. Um, with all of that being said, I'm going to tell you a little bit about how we're going to get out of here, okay? So many of you, I, I told the young people to let the parents know, because I know this is our first year here at Hilltop, but I'm going to kind of talk you through what's going to happen, okay? Um, so the young people are required to stay until our trailer doors are closed. That's right. All of, all of this stuff is getting torn down, packed up into boxes, and we're sticking it into the trailer. Now, I know that that sounds scary. That sounds like, oh my goodness, we're going to get out of here at 2 a.m. I just have to let you know, we're fighting for our record. We have really, really fast teardowns and packups. Our, uh, our last group, it was a Christian school in South Carolina, they were out by 11.15, okay? Now listen, that was South Carolina. This is North Carolina. Yeah, that's right, okay? Yeah. <laughs> That's good. And so I've heard it from some of the young people. Um, I'm some very ambitious young, young men. They've been coming and talking to me, and they've been telling me that they want to do this by 1030. I like the sound of that. Yeah. I like the sound of that. But listen, that's not going to happen without their help, and that's not going to happen without your help. So if you've got free hands tonight, uh, you know, tomorrow, Saturday, you can sleep in. But how about you go ahead and jump in and help? We can put you to work, and we would more than appreciate your help with that. Um, but, but as far as sending these kids out to you, I know you're, you're excited to see them, to take pictures with them, um, to congratulate them, do all of that stuff. And we're more than happy for you to do that, okay? So we're going to hold them up here for about, for, for just a little bit to get a big group picture while they're up here, okay? They're going to get a big group picture. So in just a second, you'll have an opportunity if you want that picture to just come into the middle and take it on your device, okay? Well, after we've held them up here for about 45 minutes, I'm just kidding, not that long. After we've held them up here for about a minute, we're going to send them out to you, okay? And, and you congratulate them. Take your pictures. Do everything you want to do. But then after 10 minutes... Okay, that, does, that, does, that seems like a long time, but it's not. After 10 minutes, we're going to ask you to send them to the costume room. Okay, they're going to go to the costume room to get their street clothes, and they're going to get out of costume, and that's when the teardown timer starts. Okay, so that's, that's what happens. So we're going to take a picture. We're going to send them out to you. Ten minutes after that, we're going to ask you to send them to start working on teardown and pack up. 
Um, also, if you would like any more information about what you've seen or about the ministry of the Academy of Arts and our goal and our mission to ma of making the Bible come to life since 1971, I would encourage you to check out our promotional table. We have pamphlets out there with information, um, and we will have somebody out there to answer questions. Um, all right, I think I've spoken enough. Miss Laura, if you could come up here and um, just help the young people get to um, back to their positions. Um, and if you would like to take a picture of your young people with the group, now's your chance to come to the middle and get that picture. So come on, come on up, and I'll, I'll dismiss them in just a moment.